What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to ink your drawings with a brush pen. What you're going to need for this video is a uh, smooth paper. I'm using uh, Canson Bristol paper and you're going to need a brush pen. So what I have here is a Japanese brush pen. You can get these just about anywhere in the art store. And uh, there's also the Tombow Feud pen, the Feud Deno Soup pen, the Pigma Micron, the FB pen. It stands for a fine brush, I guess. Any pen that looks like this can help you in this video. So I'm just going to use this one. Let's get started. The majority of this video, you're going to need to twist your paper round and round because if you're using a brush pen, be mindful of the pressure that you put on it because if you put too much pressure on the brush pen, you'll get a very uh, a very thick line width, a very a, a very big line width, and if you put less pressure on it, you can uh, make a small line width. And somewhat throughout this video, I'll probably exemplify that. But let's just get started. So first, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna do the hair. So right here at this point here, that's where you're gonna put a lot of pressure on it. And see how it tapers at the end? That's what a brush pen does, and that's how um, what I really like about it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, and it's really good for curves. Curves like this. And then for the ear, go in. And then sometimes for the face, I like to twist it to do one part. And sometimes I like to leave it this way to do it, do the other part. And then twist it again. And then come back up to the face or the ear. And then I like to do the rest of the hair. And the shape that you're drawing, it uh, if it kind of tapers, that's the best part of using a brush pen is that it tapers, kind of like what I did here. Right there where you see the eyeliner, if you can see that. What I, what I like to do is when I'm drawing the eyes, I like to add pressure going up and then less pressure going back down because the eyes I draw are semicircle. And then when I come off of this part of the top of the eye, I like to have a lot of pressure to make the eyeliner and do the same thing on the other side. And then... do that just like that and then to fix your mistakes just go in with uh with a little pressure and just fix it no problem and then I'm gonna circle in the pupils the irises and there you go drawing uh drawing the eyes And then for a little line width, you're going to want to add less pressure to the brush pen. And then make sure it kind of tapers at the end, right there. And then especially when doing the eyebrows, this is something you got to watch out for. What I like to do is I like to draw like a single line for the eyebrows if they're black. Because what I'm doing, I'm using a black fine liner. And then I like to flick with it. And then fix any mistakes. Just like that. Alright, next part I'm going to do. Uh, as you can see, if you can see, this part of the hair that kind of tapers at the end. This is where the brush pen really, really does come in handy. So you can really just draw two lines just for the hair. Or at least this part of the hair. See how it tapers? And then that's a really thick uh, brush stroke. Do the same thing there, and in most cases, you might like kind of make these two lines intersect right about here, right where it tapers. But some in some cases, that's all right. But that's why you got to watch how you use a brush pen. Uh, you want to watch where it stops, the streamline, all that stuff. And then here, I'm twisting the paper again just to do the mouth. And then for the neck, I'm going to do the same thing with the line width, fixing mistakes. And then 
another strand of hair. And then fixing more mistakes. And then for the arm, I like to add, you know, for the top part of the arm, I like to add the same, the same line width. And then for this arm, I don't know if it's called the forearm or whatever, but I like to start at the hand, like right where the wrist is. I like to come back and make sure that taper is like right about there, like almost where the elbow is. Because uh, that part of the arm is kind of like a curve the way I sketched it. So any curve that you find in your in your sketch, that's where the brush pen really comes in handy because uh, brush pen really does like make a bunch of curvy lines because that's like that's like what you see when you're buying like brush markers. You'll see a bunch of curvy lines because that's what they're uh, that's what mainly they're best at doing when you're uh, drawing. Because uh, I don't really like the way brush pens do straight lines. That's where uh, my uh, micron pens come in. So come back again make sure that tapers but it's really connecting to the other line that we drew so we don't have to really worry about how it tapers just as long as it just as long as it connects to this line here that we already drew and then come back up and then connect those lines and then the same thing all over here just watch the pressure that you put on it and you should be all right and then for the circle sometimes if you're keeping the paper at uh, the same position like this and you're using a brush pen you can expect the, uh, the line width to change like you see here right here there's a thick line width and right here it kind of tapers up here because that's where I stopped at drawing the uh, drawing the circle but right there, you can also fix your mistakes so that it doesn't look like it tapers. And then, you're good. And then we're going back up and drawing the shirt. And the same thing with the shirt. Remember the way we did the hair up here? There's a curve up here too, sort of. Because see right here where it, uh, where I started that's the small line width and I didn't put a lot of pressure on it because that's where I started and, and I didn't want to mess it up and then when I went around the line width became a little bit bigger and then it came a little bit and then it came back going back to small going back to being a small line width and that's okay I really like doing that and then going back and doing the same thing and then when you're drawing a straight line from right here and then up here, just flick. Just like that. But if you want it to be, if you want the line width to be thicker, then you want, you want to be careful because I like to do the same thing a little, uh, I like to do the same thing twice. Because sometimes you lose control of the brush pen and you might end up making your line in a different direction than the first time you drew it. And that's sometimes a problem, believe me, I've been there. So that's why you gotta watch how you do it, the direction of where you put your brush pen. All right, and now for the wrinkles, I like to draw just two lines flicking up, and basically the same thing what we did here. So flick up and flick up again, that's it. And then down for this dress. Thick line with the pressure. And then right here where the dress is, it's a lot of curves here. So like I said, the brush pen really does its job here. So you're gonna come down. And then where it tapers, you're gonna wanna start there. And then you're kinda connecting it to the other, where it tapers again. And then come around and curve, and there you go. And then if you don't want it to taper, just fix the mistake with providing the smallest line width that you can possibly get. And then same thing with the legs. Curve. It tapers right here where I started and then I made it bigger by adding more pressure. And then curve back down. Added more pressure to the bottom of the shoe here. And 
in there. And then a curve here for a sock. And then this is the same thing. Okay, and then we are sort of done. And now what I like to do is I'm gonna put the brush pen away, unless you wanna, um, because I don't know if you can see it, but there's a bunch of spots all over her uh, dress. And what I like to do with, in times of that, is because I personally don't know my own strength, and I might end up making too much pressure for these little spots, and I don't intend to make those spots have a big line width. So what I like to do is I'm gonna put this aside, and I'm going to use my Micron PN. And I want to go over these spots with a small line width. Something probably smaller than the brush pen line widths. And you know, something like this. And the best part about it is you're freelancing it. So you don't have to worry about it being tapered. But if you're using a brush pen and you are freelancing, that, that makes it much better because you have a little bit more versatility and a little and a little bit more like freedom when you're kind of drawing. That's why that's why like, I call it freelancing. Or at least that's what it's called. And so just Aside from using the Micron pen to fill in these like mud splotches all over her, I'm going to use the brush pen to make this kind of decoration on her dress. And what I'm doing is the same thing we did here with the shirt. It tapers, big line width, then back to tapering. And it happens so fast so you barely even see it. So as you can see here, it tapers. And then it happens so fast like, like that. Pressure, no pressure. Pressure, no pressure. At least that's what happens after you start doing it. And then when you keep doing it, you'll probably get used to it. Doing stuff like that. And then one more thing. I like to go under here and add some shadow. And this is where hatching, the type of shading that I like to do. But I like to do it a different way. Since I'm using a brush pen, I'm kind of freelancing it. Just make some straight lines. And what I like to do for hatching is I like to scribble in those lines for a shadow. Just like that. And then if you want to, you can go ahead and uh, make a background or whatever. And if there's no sketch, you can freelance that too. And 
and then there you go that's how you ink your drawings with a brush pen so if you like this video and you find it useful give it a like and a comment and subscribe to my channel for more videos every week and i'll see you in my next video I